Super Mario Brothers is a game that really needs no introduction. Mario was the game that came packaged with most early Nintendo consoles, and was the game that started many people's love for the NES. Looking at it from a modern point of view, Super Mario Brothers seems extremely basic. You travel almost exclusively from left to right along a single plane, and there's really only two different power-ups, but there's brilliance in that simplicity. To understand why Super Mario Brothers was such a huge breakout hit that would change the video game industry and create a franchise that has generated almost $35 billion, you need to understand the state of video games in the early 1980s. By the end of the 1970s, Atari had built a huge video game business in North America and released many landmark titles that would pave the way for the future of gaming. But their success was also their downfall. Tons of companies wanted to cash in on the Atari craze, and there were so many new games being released that consumers couldn't keep up. Even worse, most of these games were unoriginal knockoffs of more popular games, or were just plain terrible. After some high-profile failures like Atari's rushed home port of Pac-Man and the E.T. game, the home video game industry as a whole was considered a failure in North America, and by the end of 1983, most major stores wouldn't sell video games anymore. But while the home market faded, the arcades were thriving. Arcade game hardware was expensive, but it allowed for much more advanced graphics and sound than the home consoles of the time. Nintendo had a big hit with Donkey Kong in the arcades, and in Japan, the home gaming industry hadn't crashed. Their Famicom gaming system was selling well over there, and Nintendo had their best team, led by Shigeru Miyamoto and Takashi Tezuka, hard at work on new games for the system. The two had collaborated together on Devil World, a Pac-Man-esque Famicom game that was never released in North America, and now they were working on two games simultaneously, an exploration-focused game that would become The Legend of Zelda, and an athletic, action-oriented game that would become Super Mario Bros. Miyamoto originally conceived the game as a combination of the brick breaking from Ice Climbers with the smooth scrolling from Excite Bike, but it was actually Tezuka's idea to use Mario, the hero from their successful Donkey Kong and Mario Bros. arcade games, as the protagonist for the athletic game. Tezuka and Miyamoto both wanted to use a large, super-sized character sprite this time, and so Super Mario Bros. was born. Composer Koji Kondo also worked on Devil World, and Miyamoto brought him on board to work on the new projects. Kondo actually played early prototypes of the game, and created music and sound effects that he felt fit the flow of the action. The game was a massive success in Japan, where it released on both cartridge and on a disc for the Famicom Disk System. It was such a big hit that they recorded lyrics for the theme song, there were tons of products and marketing tie-ins, and an animated movie was produced. Let's just say that it's a good bit different than the live-action movie we'd eventually get years later. Who, who's this, this Cooper clown? We gotta talk to that goofball now. Nintendo's earliest console releases in the United States were sets that included Duck Hunt, which used the Zapper light gun, and Gyromite for use with Rob the Robot. They branded their machine an entertainment system, to distance it from the failed video game consoles that had come before. But it wasn't long before every NES came packaged with Super Mario Bros., and it was the real killer app that sold the system. The game's graphics were clean and colorful, and the soundtrack was full of catchy tunes that you'd find yourself humming long after you finished playing. It was so much closer to the arcade experience at home. And considering most arcade games of the time were confined to a static play area, 
Mario's smooth scrolling levels were cutting edge. Mario controlled intuitively. He could move fast, but still precisely. It didn't take long to learn how to play Super Mario Brothers, but there was plenty of challenge in mastering it. And then there were the secrets. Never before did an action game seem to have so much hidden beneath the surface. From one-up mushrooms and invisible blocks to warp zones, Super Mario Brothers is full of surprises. Of course the game was a huge hit in North America. I'm sure that video games would have eventually rebounded in the United States, but Super Mario Brothers was what players needed to give them a second chance. The NES would dominate the 8-bit era of gaming, and Mario was the spark that started the fire. Over three decades later, the game is still fun to play. Many sequels would reinvent Mario over the years, but his original adventure is still worth revisiting. When IGN released their list of the top 100 NES games of all time, they ranked Super Mario Bros. at number 3. Modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. Super Mario Bros. starts out easy, but quickly incorporates very demanding platforming challenges. One false move could mean instant death. Also, some of the castle levels are cryptic mazes that repeat infinitely if you don't make the correct moves. But what if I told you how to do tons of fun tricks, like jumping over the flagpole? What if I showed you how to get to the fabled Minus World, and even showed you the weird, different Minus World from the Famicom Disk System version of the game? And what if I told you how to beat all 32 levels, and find every secret hidden within them? Well, today on the 50th episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and check out YouCanBeatVideoGames.com for episode lists, news, and official You Can Beat Video Games merchandise. Let's get started. Alright, Super Mario Brothers. The first little Goomba in this game has probably claimed the lives of millions of new players, so give them a little bit of respect as you stomp them into oblivion. Consuming this magic mushroom, which is what it's actually called in the instruction manual, will make Mario grow into his super form, and then if you take a damage you won't die, you'll just go back into small form. If you're very careful, you can collect this one up and still get back to the left to enter this shortcut pipe. Whenever you scroll the screen from left to right, anything that's on the left you will not be able to go back to. You can only move forward in this game. And when you emerge, you'll be at the end of the level, so that's an easy shortcut to the flagpole. But what if you don't take the shortcut? Back here, you can collect the one-up mushroom. And then we can collect a fire flower here. Now, you only get the fire flower if you hit that box while you're in your super form. But with the fire flower, you'll be able to press B to shoot fireballs. This is known as a 10 coin block, although you can actually get more than 10 coins out of it if you hit it fast enough. And over here, we can collect a star man. Star man will make us invincible, and there's a fire flower up on top there. But we will run out of invincibility fairly quickly, so we want to hurry up and just move forward without it. Over here, we'll reach the end of the level, and this is back to the same spot. And if you run and jump and hit the flagpole high enough, you'll get 5,000 points. Now, if you don't hit it quite as high, you will only get 2,000 points. So that's what this looks like. And a little lower in the middle, you'll get 800. Lower than that, you'll get 400. And at the very bottom, you'll only get 100 points. Now, it is possible to jump over the flagpole, 
but I'll show you how to do that later in the video. Level 1-2 is an underground level, so we see this animation of Mario entering a pipe. At the very beginning, there's a power-up in the first box, and the rest of them are coins. And if you head over this way and take out this Goomba, there's a 10-coin block here that you can hit. Remember, if you hit it fast enough, you can actually get more than 10 coins. Now, if you're big or fire Mario, you can break the bricks here, and there's actually a shortcut to finishing this level, which I'll show you here. Just break a few bricks in the ceiling, get a bit of a running start, and you can jump up onto the ceiling, and then just run almost the entire way to the end. You'll hit some platforms that are moving towards the end, and there's a fire flower at the end here. You'll probably need to use the moving platform to get it, so jump from the platform over to the fire flower if you want it. And if you jump from this platform and continue across the ceiling, you'll find the first warp zone, which can take you as far as level 4-1. There's another warp zone in 4-2, but we're going to play all of the levels, so let's see what happens if we don't take the shortcut here. We're going to collect that 10 coin block again, but this time, instead of going up onto the ceiling, we're just going to collect those coins, and then we're going to break the blocks on the right side of the formation, where we'll find another Starman. But the problem with this Starman is usually you have to waste a bunch of time breaking blocks on the right, but if you get a running start and then hold down, you can actually slide underneath those bricks and save yourself some invincibility time. If you need to get this fire flower, make sure to save that platform with the coin on it. That will make it a lot easier to jump up to that higher level. There's a 10 coin block here, and you want to get a running start and jump up to this area with the coins. We're going to be able to collect a 1-up. Now you want to hit it, and then after you hit the block, you want to break the next brick in front of it so that it'll fall down. But if you break that brick in front of it first, it may actually jump over and then you'll be chasing it. You can take the first pipe to get to the bottom area here. And there's another 10 coin block for you to find right before the exit pipe. This will take you out right after those pipes. Over here, we'll find those platforms that would lead you to the warp zone, but this time we're going to go through the exit pipe so that we can get back to level 1-3. There's another way to collect this fire flower. You can kind of jump and push off the left side. Remember, you can't go back to the left. It's almost like there's a wall there, and you can use it as a wall to get some leverage. Jump from those stairs to get to the flag. And before we go on here, let's talk about the Minus World. So at the very end here at the exit pipe, you want to break a couple blocks, but not that last one on the right. And then you want to go over to this corner, hold down, and try to jump backwards. And you're trying to kind of clip your head through that block. You don't actually have to hold down to do it, but that seems to make it a bit easier. And once you go through the wall, you want to quickly go into the first pipe. You don't want to walk too far to the right, or you'll end up in the regular warp zone. If you've never done it before, it may take a few tries to get it. Just keep trying, you will get it eventually. Once you're into the Minus World, you'll notice that it's a pretty typical swimming level, a lot like 2-2 or 7-2. But the interesting part about it is what happens when you get to the end. So I'm going to try to hurry through this and just get to the end. I'm not collecting all of the coins here in the Minus World. Although I'll collect a bunch of them because I can't help myself. So we're just going to make our way to the end, carefully shooting our way through any of the enemies that we see. The fish enemies are called Cheap Cheeps, and the squid ones are called Bloopers. And here's the exit pipe. But instead of coming out to the flagpole, it actually takes you back to the beginning, and this will repeat forever, like some kind of twisted Mario purgatory. Now, if you do the same exact thing in the Famicom Disk System version of the game, you'll come to a different Minus World, and this one's bizarre. Look, there's Princess Toadstool, but we can't seem to rescue her. Is it because she's actually drowned, and that's her waterlogged corpse? 
And over here, it seems like we found Bowser, the king of the Koopa, who is randomly popping up slightly at the bottom of the screen. You also can't seem to collect this question mark box. This area appears to be very similar to 1-3, but it's a little bit different. Those platforms are certainly not the same, and the Hammer Brothers never appeared in a level like this. You just want to make your way to the end here. It's very strange to swim through a stage like this. When you get to the end, you may think, okay, well now it's going to repeat again infinitely like it does in the North American version, but no. It actually goes on to minus two. World Minus 2 is not as interesting as the first Minus World on the Famicom Disk System. This one seems to be the same as World 7-3, which I guess is appropriate to do one of these flying fish levels after a swimming level, so that part makes sense. In any case, you want to make your way to the end here, because as ordinary as this level is, World Minus 3 is very strange. World Minus 3 seems to be a combination of an underground level with a castle level, which is very strange. Oh, and there's flying blooper enemies here that you can jump on top of and kill. You actually get a thousand points for jumping on a blooper, but you only get 200 when you kill one with fireballs, but you would never have the opportunity to jump on top of a blooper anywhere else in the game. So this is very unique. When you come over here to the right, you need to make sure that you take the lower path. This is sort of like World 4-4, but if you take the wrong path, you'll reach a dead end, and your only option will be to wait for the time to run out. And at the end, you've rescued... nobody? It says the princess is in another castle, and she definitely is, but this actually counts as beating the game, and you can choose a world by pressing the B button, and the level that you choose will actually be a second quest level, so this is world 3, and in the second quest, they've replaced all of the Goombas with Buzzy Beetle enemies, so you'll notice one of those right over here to the right, there's that Buzzy Beetle. So that is sort of beating the game. But let's get back to the actual game. Here's World 1-3. There's a weird mechanic in this game where if you collect all of the coins in a dash 3 level, so there's 1-3, 2-3, 3-3, etc. If you collect all of the loose coins, whenever you get to the next world, so for this one, whenever we get to World 2-1, will be rewarded by being able to find a hidden 1-up mushroom that would not normally be there. It would also be there if we used the warp zone to get there, or if we died and used the continue code. I haven't mentioned the continue code yet. If you run out of lives and get game over, whenever you start the game up again, just hold the A button in, and you will continue on the first level of whatever world you were on. So if you were on world 3-3, you'll come back on 3-1. So that is a handy tip. Here is our first castle level. There is a power-up here that we can get, and you can hang out on top there to avoid that fire stick. The fire sticks cannot be killed, so you just need to avoid them carefully walk under these ones, and there is a space between these two fire sticks where you can't be hit by them, so take advantage of that, and then you can just take a quick running jump to get over that one, and there's a space between these two where you can't be damaged as well. Carefully get between those two, and you'll notice that the hitbox on those fireballs is a little bit smaller than you might think, so you can actually barely graze the front and not get damaged. And over here, you can actually find six hidden coins if you jump in the right spots. At the end here, we're going to face Bowser, although this is an imposter Bowser, and if you shoot him with your fireballs, he'll turn into a Goomba and die. And we've rescued a Mushroom Retainer, 
but our princess is in another castle. But what if you're small and you need to fight Bowser? Well, you just want to run underneath him whenever he jumps. That's the best way to do it. Back in the 80s, we used to say, don't take the time to smell his toes, just run under as fast as you can. Now here's an interesting trick. If you get to the end as Fire Mario, and you hit that axe just as you take damage from Bowser, you'll come through and you'll still be big, which is weird. Normally you would go down to small whenever you get hit. But when you come into the next level, if you get a mushroom, which there's one right here, it'll make you get small. Now this small form actually will allow you to take an extra hit, so that's interesting as it is. And that big form that we were in before, if we would have taken a hit as that big form, we would have actually died. But whenever we get a fire flower, now we are small fire Mario, which is super awesome. Check out small fire Mario here in a swimming level. If you were to get hit by an enemy as Small Fire Mario, you'll actually turn back into your super form, but this is that bad super form where if you take a hit you'll actually die. But if you do get another mushroom, you'll grow into your small form where you can actually take a hit and still survive. And if you get another fire flower, you will return to the Small Fire Mario form, so as long as you don't die, you can carry this form the whole way to the end of the game. And you can perform this trick on the axe at the end of any world. The middle block here contains a power-up, and over on the right we're going to find that hidden 1-up mushroom that's our reward for collecting every coin in level 1-3. This 1-up would not be there if we hadn't collected all of those coins, or gotten here using a warp zone or the continue code. There's another power-up in the lower left corner of this array. All of the other question marks here are coins. There's going to be a star man that we could find in this box, but over here we're going to find something new, a beanstalk that will lead us to coin heaven. It's hidden in this box over here on the right. Climb up the beanstalk. And up here, there's a fun little trick you can do where if you get back on the beanstalk, you can climb it to the top and look like you're running at the top of it. But that's just for fun. Jump onto the platform and try to grab as many coins as you can with each jump. That's your best way to get as many coins as possible here. A lot of people think that you can only get two coins at the end, but it is possible to get all three if you just kind of run off at the right time. Down at the bottom, we can head to the end, but let's say that we didn't take that beanstalk. So we'll go back to where we found the star man. In this part of the level, we're going to head to the right and we're going to find a pipe that we can go down. There are way more coins up in coin heaven, so that may be the better way to go. But if you do take this path, there is an additional power-up that you can find, which is in the left box here. Try to keep the left pipe on the screen so you can use it to get up on top and collect the fire flower. And watch out for those piranha plants. They won't come out of the pipe if you're standing on top of it though. Head on over to the right, there's a 10 coin block here, and after that we're going to find the most difficult power-up in the game to obtain. It's easy to get if you're small Mario and you just want to get a magic mushroom, but as big Mario you want to get a running start and then quickly jump with some momentum from the lower box to reveal the fire flower in that top one. Very difficult to do. There's a hidden coin block here which makes you able to avoid that springboard. And once we hit the flagpole, we'll be on to level 2-2. Although we played the Minus World already, World 2-2 is our first official swimming level. The first thing I want to point out is if you hold down while you're at the bottom of the screen, almost nothing can hit you down there. The bloopers will not go down to the bottom of the screen. Another thing you can do is if you hold down while you're at the bottom of the screen and then start swimming, you'll actually have a smaller hitbox and your head can actually pass through some enemies. 
but while you're doing this, you won't be able to shoot your fireballs, so there is a bit of a trade-off there. If you are in your super form without the fireballs, that may actually be the best way to go through the swimming stage, since you'll have a nice small hitbox, and you won't be able to shoot fire anyways. Make your way to the right. If you have fireballs, that makes it a lot easier. Be careful when you go over empty areas at the bottom of the screen. They will try to suck you down, and that is instant death. So you'll feel a little bit of pull whenever you get close to the bottom there. You can actually go over that coral, and when you hit the pipe on the right, that will take you to the stairs that lead us to the flagpole and World 2-3. World 2-3 has a bunch of flying fish enemies, so we used to always call this one Cheap Cheap Heaven. You'll want to get a running start here, and moving fast seems to be the best way to avoid the flying Cheap Cheeps. You just want to get underneath them, don't try to jump on top of them, sometimes you'll hit them at an odd angle and you'll end up taking damage. Remember, if you collect every coin here in level 2-3, You'll find a secret 1-up in World 3-1 that wouldn't normally be there. So try to collect all of the coins, but move as fast as you can and you'll be able to get to the end of this one fairly quickly. It's not a very long level at all. Climb the stairs and jump to the flagpole, and we'll be on to World 2-4. World 2-4 is another castle, and it's the first appearance of the Lava Spirit, or the Potaboos, which hop out of the lava and seem to appear in almost every Mario game that I can think of. You want to take the lower path here. There are fewer fire sticks down here, and they are much easier to avoid than on the top path. Wait for this one to move out of the way, and you want to jump on the upward moving platforms and then quickly get from the lower one on top of the wall here. That's the easiest way to get through. You can collect a few coins, and you know that that fire means that Imposter Bowser is ahead. If you're able to take him out with your fireballs, you'll notice that it's actually just a Koopa Troopa in disguise. And we found another mushroom retainer, but our princess is in another castle. It's time for World 3-1. World 3-1 is our first nighttime level with the black background. This is actually how Miyamoto had originally conceived the entire game to look, although I'm glad they went with the blue backgrounds instead. If you go down the pipe here on the right, you'll find a bonus room, and on the left side, if you're able to break some bricks, you can actually find a hidden power-up, but you would not be able to get that if you were only small Mario. We'll grab a couple more coins over here on the right, but there's nothing hidden in the bricks on the right side. And when we emerge from the pipe, we're going to find our hidden one up that we got for getting all of the coins in level 2-3. There it is right there. And over here we can find a star man for some invincibility. The invincibility is very helpful for our first encounter with the Hammer Brothers. And there's another power up in the box on the right if you need it. If you get a good running start, you can actually avoid that jumping board. And in between the block layers here, we can find a hidden beanstalk and go up to Coin Heaven. Coin Heaven is a little bit different here with the nighttime theme, but the concept is the same. You want to try to get as many coins as you can with each jump. It's just that this time there's some of these little cloud platforms that will get in your way. And at the very end, you have to get up on top, so try to get on top now, and if you run quickly, you can just go right over the spaces in those platforms. Collect the last three coins, which will give us an extra life, very nice. And when you drop out of coin heaven, there's actually another 10 coin block over here on the left side. At the end of this level, we can do a classic trick to get tons of extra lives. So stop a Koopa Troopa on the stairs, and you want it to have just about that much space between the shell and the wall, and you're going to jump from the next stair down onto the left side of the shell. I usually hold up while I'm doing this, but I don't think it's necessary. You just want to keep trying to do it until you get this chain reaction, and you'll get a bunch of points, and eventually you'll start getting just so many 1-ups. 
if you fall off the back of the shell, just jump back on and try to get it going again. And I usually just keep doing it until the time runs out. Whenever the timer runs out, you'll notice that we'll have a crown and then some kind of symbol that shows how many lives that we have because it's too high to be displayed in numbers. There is too much of a good thing here though. I recommend only doing this trick until the time runs out once and not coming back here and trying to do it a second time. If you actually get too many lives, whenever the time runs out or the next time the game checks to see how many lives you have, it will actually give you game over. So you can see that here. Game over and send you all the way back to the title screen. So just do it one time and don't be too greedy. You don't need that many lives to beat this game. Well, if you don't take the beanstalk, there is another power-up over here to the right of where that beanstalk is. You can collect it in the question mark box in the lower right corner. So there it is. And here's where that coin heaven lets you out. So there's the 10 coin block. We're not going to do the extra lives trick this time. We're just going to move on to world 3-2. And there's the flagpole. In World 3-2, there are a lot of opportunities to kick a Koopa Troopa shell and hit a whole bunch of enemies with it for a ton of points. So we can do it here at the beginning. You want to kind of run behind it, but make sure that you don't get hit by it, and you'll see that you just get a ton of points for doing that. And if you can actually hit enough enemies with the same shell, you'll eventually get a 1-up. Down here we can hit a 10 coin block, and in that box above there is a star man that you can find for invincibility. We're actually going to want to run this invincibility out because I do want to show you a good spot where we can hit one of those shells and actually get an extra life. So there's one right after this area. There is nothing hidden in that brick above, so don't worry about hitting it. But if you can hit this Koopa Troopa and follow it behind, yes, there are enough enemies there to get an extra life. Pretty nice. And that's pretty much the end of World 3-2. That was an easy one. You'll notice whenever we get to the next level that since we got that one up, we now have crown zero lives. The crown means 10 or more. So that's whenever you get the crown. And don't forget in World 3-3 that if we collect all of the coins, we'll be able to find an additional one up in World 4-1. This platform here will start falling whenever you step on it, so be careful of that. And these scale lifts are very interesting. One side will make the other side go up, and if you stay on it too long, it will drop off the bottom, but it will give you a bunch of points. If you get a running start, you can get up on top there and collect those coins. And we're going to head over to the right. This is a very interesting trick. We can actually jump over the flagpole here if we set it up just perfectly. So we're going to use this scale lift and try to get it up to the very top position. And then we're going to get a running start from this moving platform, jump barely touching that lift, and you can get over the flag. It is possible, although it's very difficult to do. Once you're past the flag, this goes on infinitely, and there is no escaping it. You'll have to let the time run out. Now here it is in slow motion. You want to wait until it drops right past the middle of that cloud, and then you want to jump. That seems to set up the sub-pixels or something, but you'll need to get a few more jumps to set it up in the right position. You also want to get a full running start on this bar, so get to the end and then run to the edge and jump from the very end. It's very difficult to do, but this is not the only level where you can jump over the flagpole. It's actually possible to do here in 1-1 as well. To do this, you need to be careful not to advance the screen too far to the right, just barely enough to get the turtle to come. And when it gets to the middle of that bush, you want to get a running start and jump at the end of the platform to the left. If you hit him, he'll reappear at the bottom of the screen and start walking to the right. 
You need to follow him, don't let him go off the screen, and you do need to collect this mushroom to get up into super form or for some reason the trick will not work. Now I am going to speed this up, but you do need to walk with this guy the whole way to the end of the level and make sure that you don't get hit or you'll lose your super form and you won't be able to get over the flag. So walk him all the way over here. And you want to get to the very top of the stairs and wait on the left side. I wait to start my run until the Koopa Troopa's head gets right near that first black dot on the mountain. And then you run and just jump. And if you do it at the right time, you'll jump off of his back and go over the flag. So there it is again in slow motion. That may actually be easier than the one in 3-3. Well, if you don't go over the flag, we can get 5,000 points instead and move on to World 3-4. World 3-4 is another castle level filled with lava, pootaboos, and fire sticks. Carefully make your way across the gauntlet at the beginning, and like most other castle levels, there's only one power-up located in the middle of this set of three question mark blocks. For these first two sets of fire sticks, the bottom one will go clockwise and the top one goes counterclockwise, but they actually reverse it for the third set, so be careful. Watch out for the pootaboos that come out of the lava here, and once you get across those gaps, you'll be almost in the clear, because here is another imposter Bowser. Rapidly hit him with your fireballs and we'll see that he's actually a fuzzy beetle, which is an enemy that we haven't encountered yet in the game at this point. World 4 is the first appearance of Lakitu, and he is a big time jerk. You'll want to get to a high platform and stomp him out as soon as possible. The spiny eggs that he drops turn into spinies on the ground, and obviously you can't jump on them so you can only hit them with your fireballs. Lakitu will not stay dead for long, so move to the right as quickly as you can, and on top of these boxes we'll find our 1-up mushroom. That's the reward for getting all of the coins in level 3-3. We can also use that platform to take out Lakitu, and then we can head over to the right. There's a pipe here, but if we get up onto the next pipe, we can actually go inside it, but we can collect the coins first. Down here we can take a shortcut, and if you run a little bit and press down, you can slide under and get the coins at the bottom. The power-up's a little more difficult, you'll need to get a running start and then jump and hold down to get underneath. That's a difficult thing to do, but if you need a fire flower, that's one way to get it. Now if you don't take the pipe and you head this way, there's a much easier power up to grab right here. So if you need a fire flower, I recommend staying above ground and use this opportunity to take out Lakitu once again. All the rest of the question mark boxes here are coins, but you might as well pick them up and then make your way to the end of the stage. There's a few hops that you need to make, but they're not very difficult. And down here, we can actually hit another 10 coin block. And if you don't scroll the screen too far to the right, we can actually jump back to the stairs and still get 5,000 points for the flag. World 4-2 is a famous one because it contains not one, but two different warp zones. Once you get into the underground, there's a few platform jumps that you need to do at the beginning. The easiest way to do this is to just not run, so let go of the B button, and you should have no problem making the precision jumps that you need to make across there. At the bottom here you can collect another power up, and 5 bricks from the end you can find a hidden 10 coin block. Once you get those coins, there's a few more coins located in the question marks over here, but in the three on the right, the one in the middle contains another power-up. If you run fast enough, you don't have to jump onto that platform, but you're looking for a hidden invisible coin right there to get started on getting to the warp zone, so make sure to clear those two bricks first, then hit the second coin, trigger the beanstalk, and then you can hit the other two invisible coins. You don't want to hit those ones too early, or it may be difficult to actually hit the one that you need to to get the beanstalk. 
Once you're up here, there's a few coins you can collect. And at the very end, you'll find the warp zone that can take you all the way to World 8, which is the final world in the game. So if you want to get through the game quickly, that's a fast way to do it. Now if you don't take this warp zone, there is another warp zone for you to find, but it's much later in World 4 too. Even if we're not going up the beanstalk, we could still collect the invisible coins, and down here with this Koopa Troopa, we can find a 10 coin block. In the same spot on the other side of this tall pipe, we can actually find a Starman, and down below there we see a buzzy beetle enemy, which is sort of like a Koopa Troopa, but it moves very fast, and you cannot kill it with fireballs. But once you grab that Starman, you may just want to go down this pipe, which is a shortcut. On the far right side here, we can find a 10 coin block to hit. You'll need to go up and over to try to get the coins below, and you can try to curve a jump inside, or you can also try jumping from the ledge on the far left. There isn't anything else hidden inside there. If you don't go down in the pipe, you may get more use out of this Starman. So just make your way to the right, and there's actually a hidden power-up in the middle here. So if you need an extra power-up, you may not want to take that shortcut pipe. Over here is where that pipe lets out, so this is where the two paths converge. Be careful to quickly jump off of this platform, and on the far left side here, you can find yet another power-up. Don't drop down with that buzzy beetle, but if you break through the ceiling and head to the right, that's where you'll find that second warp zone, which will take you to World 5. But of course, we're trying to play all the levels, so if you want to exit World 4-2, you can just get a running start and run right off that pipe without jumping. That's probably the safest way to get down to where the exit is. And you'll notice we got six fireworks here. Let's talk real quick about fireworks. The reason that you get them is because of the last digit of your timer whenever you hit the flagpole. If it's a one, a three, or a six, you'll get that many fireworks. So this time we should get one. And if you have any other number, you won't get any fireworks at all. So that's how those work, and each firework is worth 500 points. In World 4-3, we're once again trying to collect all of the coins so that we can get a hidden bonus 1-up in World 5-1. There are a lot of these scale platforms in 4-3, so be careful to not let the right side get too high, or it may be difficult to jump over there. You can easily ride that platform high enough to get to the upper platforms here where you can grab some more coins. And here's another one of those scale platforms. Let it get kind of high and get a running start to jump over onto it, and that's an easy way to make sure that you get to the other side. Down here we're almost at the end, but this last moving platform will lead us to the flagpole, and you'll want to jump from it when it's in a high position if you want to get 5,000 points. And that's it. We're on to 4-4. This is a different kind of castle level. This one is a maze. If you go the wrong way, and I'm going to intentionally take the wrong path, I went on the bottom here, but you're supposed to go on the top, and you see how those fire sticks disappeared? That's because we were supposed to take the upper path, and it looped because we went the wrong way. Over here, we need to take the bottom path, and it's going to look like the middle or top path's dead end, but it wouldn't really dead end, it would actually just loop infinitely. So you'll see what I mean right there. If you take the bottom path, you'll have no problem and you'll make it right to Bowser, but it's another imposter. And this time it was a spiny in disguise. We'll rescue another mushroom retainer and be on to world 5-1. 5-1 is the first appearance of Bullet Bill enemies. But before we encounter any of those, we can jump on this Koopa Troopa and shoot its shell through an array of Goombas for a ton of points. If you want even more points, you could do the same thing with that Koopa Paratroopa. 
but we're going to grab a Starman up here and we'll use the invulnerability to carry us through the next part of the level. As we make our way to the right, we're going to find the hidden one-up that we've earned for getting all the coins in World 4-3. And if we jump up on top of this pipe, we can enter a bonus room. We've seen this bonus room layout before with the 10 coin block on the right side, and you'll need to go up across the ceiling to get the coins in the middle. Once you've collected all the coins, exit through the pipe on the right, and this one's not really a shortcut, it just takes you out a few inches from the pipe where you entered. But this is the end of World 5-1, and we're on to 5-2. This next level is an interesting one. There are two paths to get through it, and one of them will take you to a bonus swimming section. We're going to take that path first. Don't go too quickly at the beginning, there's a bullet bill launcher right there that could shoot at you. But you may want to drop down to the middle level here to grab a power up. There's a loose hammer brother here, which you need to be very careful of if you don't have fireballs. So get past him however you can, and if you go down this pipe, you're going to find this very interesting swimming zone. It's short, but there's a bunch of random platforms inside, so yeah, this one's a little bit different from the other swimming levels that we've seen. Grab as many coins as you can and head out the exit pipe, and that's going to put you very close to the end of the level. Up here we can grab a star man, and that'll take you on towards the end. Now if you don't take the water zone, we can head this way past the pipe and there's another one of those hammer brothers. If you don't have fireballs, hitting them from underneath is one of the best ways to deal with them. There was an invisible coin block right there and that leads to a beanstalk, which will take us to another coin heaven area. This is a familiar coin heaven zone. It's very much like the one that we saw in level 2-1. Remember to try to jump and grab as many coins as you can with each jump. And, oh, almost missed one. Got it. And then just run off the edge and collect the three coins and that will take you down to the near end of the level. And if you're careful, you can actually get a power up and there's also a 10 coin block down here that you can slide under to grab. Once you have those coins, make your way across these platforms. Watch out for that red Koopa Troopa. Right here, there's another power-up you can get, and it's very convenient to be able to just shoot that piranha plant. But over here is another set of stairs that leads to the flagpole and World 5-3. 5-3 is almost exactly the same as 1-3, Except this time, there are bullet bills randomly flying across the screen at all times. Once again, we're trying to collect all of the coins so that we can get a bonus one up in level 6-1. Make sure to collect these coins up here, and you'll notice that another difference from 1-3 is that the moving platforms are a little bit smaller this time. There will never be more than one bullet bill on the screen at a time, so once the current one is behind you, you'll know it's safe to move forward. Once you get this far, you're pretty much at the end. Just don't mess up trying to get those last few coins. And over here, we'll find the flagpole, and we'll be on to World 5-4, which is another rehashed level. You may think that they would rehash 1-4, but it's actually 2-4, but with a lot more fire sticks, including an extra large one here at the beginning of the level. Wait until just when it passes by to make your move, and if you're on top of this power-up box, you should be easily able to jump over the extra large fire stick as it passes by. We took the bottom path in 2-4, but in 5-4 the top path is a little bit easier, and we want to do the same thing we did before here. Use these platforms to get on top of this wall, and that will help us avoid the fire stick below. I do not recommend trying to get those coins underneath the fire stick, it's almost definitely not worth it, but I'm trying to collect all the coins here so you can see how it's done. 
The easiest way to fight Bowser here is to stay on the left of the bridge, that way you won't get hit by that Pootaboo. And this time it was Lakitu in disguise. We'll pick up another Mushroom Retainer, and be on to World 6. Six one is another night-themed level, and it's another one that features Lakitu. Take him out from a high position and then get moving, although there is a 10 coin block down here to tempt you. Remember that Lakitu will not stay dead forever. Make your way over to the right. At the bottom of this formation is where we're going to find our hidden 1-up that we earned for getting all the coins in 5-3, and from this position we should be able to easily take out Lakitu again. Head on over to the right and make your way across. Down here we can find another power-up in one of these boxes, so if you don't have a fire flower or a magic mushroom that's a good place to restock. Over here we can grab a 10 coin block if you're brave, but I certainly don't recommend it, especially not with Lakitu dropping spinies all over you. This is the end of the level, so you won't have to deal with him anymore. Just make your way to the flagpole, and we'll be on to 6-2. Six dash two has tons of pipes and piranha plants, and there's also two paths to get through it, much like five dash two. Right here, there's an invisible coin with a ten coin block above it, and whenever you're done collecting those, you could go into the pipe on the left and enter the first bonus room. We've certainly seen this bonus room before. I believe this is the third time. We know what to do, collect the 10 coin block on the right side, and you could use the ledge on the left if you don't like trying to curve a jump from the middle. Once you come up out of here, if you head over to the right, we can actually find another pipe to enter, but before that we can grab this power up, and then jump inside. Here is another one of those swimming bonus areas, and it's very similar to the one that we saw in World 5. Make your way through and collect as many coins as you can, and the exit pipe will be on the right side. Once you emerge from the water, take a jump to the left so you could run across the bricks at the top of the screen. And then there's a Starman over here, but it's kind of short-lived if you want to go into yet another bonus room. You've seen this bonus room layout before as well, and it's one of the trickier ones to deal with because you have to do that run and slide to get underneath. There we go. And of course, if you want to get that power up at the end, you want to get a running start, jump and hold down, and it is possible to get through there. You need to jump again sometimes right when you get underneath it. Once you emerge from that bonus room, that will take you to the end of World 6-2, but I mentioned before that there is a totally different way to get through this one. So over here after the first bonus room, there was that power up and then we went into the pipe right there. Well if you skip over that pipe and head over to the right, there is actually a hidden beanstalk right here. It's tricky to jump to, so you want to break a few bricks and jump over to the bricks on the left side, and that should get you up into coin heaven. This is another one of those nighttime coin heavens, but you'll notice that the platform you have to ride on is a little bit smaller this time, making this one slightly more difficult. Try to collect as many coins as you can, and remember at the end you have to run across the top. Oh no, I lost the platform. Okay, alright, I think we we're alright. Yes, we got them all. And then just jump off and you can grab those last three coins. Once you come out of coin heaven, you're pretty much at the end of the level, so that is a much easier way to get through world 6-2. But the other path is a little bit more interesting with all those bonus rooms. So you decide whichever way you want to get through, either one is good. 6-3 was always one of my favorites. It has this gray and white motif, which made me think that maybe the platforms were covered in some kind of snow, but the red lining on the clouds always gives this one an ominous feel. There's a power-up you can grab if you can carefully navigate those platforms, 
And remember that if you get all the coins here, there is a bonus one up waiting for you in 7-1. The bullet bills start up about midway through the level, and they won't stop once they get going. There's a bunch of platforms here that will drop out from below you, so carefully navigate them and get to the top so you can make an easy jump to the flagpole. And with that, we're on to World 6-4. 6-4 is just a slightly more difficult version of 1-4, with a few extra fire sticks and some pootaboos thrown in at the beginning. It doesn't make it that much more challenging. Just take your time as you move through this hallway, and walk under each of the fire sticks. There's always some time to wait, but if you have an opening you can just run past that last one. And over here the fire sticks are staggered, so it's not too hard to jump in between them. Once again, there are six coins hidden in the air here, but you may not want to mess around with them because of all the fireballs that are coming in. One thing that is a lot more difficult is that the imposter Bowser here will throw a stream of hammers at you, so I recommend staying far away from him if you have fireballs, and if you're small Mario, you just want to get very close so the stream of hammers will arc over your head and whenever he jumps, just run under him as quickly as possible. So that's the best way to beat 6-4, and we're on to World 7. There's a lot of bullet bills here in World 7-1, but there's no bullet Teds, so there won't be any excellent adventures or bogus journeys. This is a tricky power-up to get, you'll need to get a little bit of momentum, and then try to bounce off the left side of the screen like it's a wall, and you can use it to get yourself up on top. Make your way to the right, shooting any Koopa Troopas that you see with your fireballs. If you want to do something crazy, there is a 10 coin block here, right in front of this bullet bill machine. Yeah, that's a dangerous one. Over here, we'll encounter the Hammer Brothers again. If you don't have fireballs, try to attack them by bumping them from below, and that 1-up is our reward for getting all of the coins in World 6-3. Down here we can enter a pipe. On the other side, we'll come out right near the entry pipe. So just make your way to the right, get through the Hammer Brothers, there's nothing hidden in the bricks there, but there is a power up in this small block all the way up in the sky that you can hit with the jumping board. If you need a fire flower, that's a good place to grab one. And that's the end of World 7-1. Hit the flagpole, and we'll be on to 7-2. Now, I know we need to suspend our disbelief a little bit to enjoy the fantasy here, and I can accept that Mario can jump very far, and he can fall great distances without getting injured, and he can eat magic mushrooms that make him grow, but I also have to accept that he's Aquaman? I mean, this guy can stay underwater for as long as he wants to and never has to take a breath? That's crazy. Not only that, he can spit magic fireballs that stay completely hot under the water? I mean, what is he throwing, like lava? Well, in any case, World 7-2 is almost exactly the same as World 2-2. There may be a few more enemies, but the level layout is pretty much the same. You can use the same strategies that you used previously, including going down to the bottom of the screen where almost nothing can hit you, or holding down so that your hitbox is smaller. When you get to the end, you'll hit the exit pipe, we'll find our stairs that will lead to the flagpole, and World 7-3. 7-3 has the same layout as 2-3, so we're going back to Cheap Cheap Heaven. There's a few more additional Koopa Troopa and Koopa Paratroopa enemies this time, which will make things a little bit more difficult. And 7-3 is the only place in the entire game where you will encounter the hovering Koopa Paratroopa, which we'll see over here. You'll notice that that one hovers instead of bouncing around. Once more, since this is a dash 3 level, 
if we collect all of the coins, there will be a bonus one up for us to find in level 8-1, so we want to try to do that as well. And when you get to the other side, we'll hit the flagpole and head on to 7-4. The last two levels were copies of other levels, but this one is something new. It's another maze. Carefully make your way across these platforms that drop out from under you and take the lower path, then the middle path, and then the top. You need to do it that way or it'll start repeating on you. Take the top path here and be careful to avoid the fire stick, but you need to drop down to the bottom and then take the middle and the top, sort of like we did before, but in a different fashion. The programmers had a lot of faith in the player to be able to figure that out. That is a very difficult maze if you don't know what you're doing. If we take out the imposter Bowser at the end here, we'll notice that it's a Hammer Brother this time. But next time we fight Bowser, it's going to be the real deal. Because World 8 is the final world. We get 300 seconds to finish World 8-1, but this is one of the longest levels in the entire game, and we do not have time to mess around. You can just run over those single space gaps, and down here we want to avoid this buzzy beetle, because that's where we can find the hidden one up that's our reward for getting all the coins in World 7-3. Head over here to the right, and then if you go down this pipe on the left, you'll see a very familiar bonus room, just like the one in level 1-2. At the end, right before the exit pipe, there's a 10 coin block, so we'll grab those coins, but we'll need to quickly exit and move along. You'll want to hold down the run button most of the time when you're in level 8-1, and just keep making your way to the right. There's an invisible coin block here, and there's a 10 coin block above it if you really want to grab some coinage, but you may just want to avoid it and move on. Take out this Koopa Troopa, and the second one almost always just falls right into one of the holes, so you should be able to get over those gaps with ease. Over here we can find a Star Man, and that should help us move faster. You need to have a running start to get over that big gap, and just keep making your way to the right while you're invincible. We're low on time now, but we still have enough to finish, and at this part here you do not want to be running when you make those jumps. That's a tricky jump to make because it seems like you need to run fast, but you want to let go of the B button to make that jump onto the single space platform out in the middle of the gap. And that's it. We've completed level 8-1 but 8-2 may be even more difficult. We're going to encounter Lakitu at the beginning of this one, so take care of this first Koopa Paratroopa, and the second one should actually just fall into a gap if you wait long enough. But when you get to the top of the stairs there, make sure to get rid of Lakitu before moving forward. If we use this jumping board, we'll be able to get a 1-up mushroom, but we kind of have to walk with it all the way to the end, where it will fall off and we can collect it. As long as we keep collecting this 1-up, if you die, you'll have as many chances as you need to get through the beginning of this level, so that's an important one to know about. Down here there's a power-up that you may desperately need. And over here, you can hit a 10 coin block here, but it's extremely difficult to set up and probably not worth it. Once you have as many coins as you can, head over to the right, and this may be one of the more difficult jumps in the game. You want to just hold run, run off the pipe, continue running to the right, and then make a jump at the end and you'll get across. After that, you can enter this bonus room, and we've certainly seen this bonus room layout before. I think this is the most common bonus room in the game. I wonder what the developers liked so much about this bonus room that they reused it so many times. Head over to the right, and we're almost to the end now. Try to avoid those bullet bills. There's a little bit of a sketchy staircase at the end. Just try to get to the top. Try not to hold the run button whenever you're jumping on small platforms, that'll make it easier to get to the top. But do get a good run so you can jump over to the flagpole and get those 5,000 points. 
Now, 8-3 is a good bit different than the previous two levels. This is like the castle walls, and there are a lot of Hammer Brothers to fight here. If you don't have fireballs, you're going to want to attack the Hammer Brothers from below, and then make sure to get a power-up over here. If you're small Mario, you may need to catch the mushroom in mid-air as it falls off the side to the right. There's another set of Hammer Brothers here, and once again, if you have fireballs, you can dispatch them with ease, but if you don't, you need to get them from below, and then you can find the fire flower in the top. You want to have fireballs for the end here, because there's no platforms to hit these Hammer Brothers from below, so they're a lot more difficult to deal with. If you do have to fight them as small or big Mario, the best way to fight them is to try to jump on them right after they jump. Usually you have an opportunity to hit them then. And that's it! We're on to 8-4, the final level of the game. 8-4 is a pipe maze. You want to jump from the lowest step at the very beginning and make your way to the right. Now, this is the wrong pipe to enter, but just for demonstration purposes, if you go down the wrong pipe, it takes you all the way back to the very beginning of the level. What you want to do is go on this platform and take the first pipe after the lava. That's the one to go to in the first part, and you'll know you're in the right spot if you see two buzzy beetles. And then there's a hidden coin here that you can jump to, and take the pipe that's up in the air. In this section, there's some cheap cheeps that fly up, and you want to take the first pipe after the lava, which will take us to a surprise underwater area. You'll want to swim past some fire sticks. I suppose that Bowser also figured out how to make magic fire that works underwater, just like Mario can. Be cautious of the bloopers. As usual, nothing can hit you at the very bottom of the screen if you're ducking, so use that to your advantage if necessary. And over here, there's one more Hammer Brother and one more Poodaboo before the final boss. Here he is. He's not really any different than the Bowsers we've fought already, except this time when you kill him, he doesn't turn into anything else. And behind him is Princess Toadstool. We've done it. We've beaten Super Mario Brothers. But what if you got to World 8-4 and you didn't have firepower? There's no power-ups in this level, so if the worst thing happens and you get here as small Mario, don't panic, it can be done. If you run really hard, you can actually jump all the way across this lava pool, but that may be a risk that's not worth taking. Head down the pipe after the lava, make your way to the right, a good rule of thumb to remember is you always want to take the pipe right after you see lava. So the first pipe after the lava is always going to be the correct one to go into. Jump over the lava here and go into the first pipe. The swimming section actually is not that difficult as small Mario because you can kind of hang out at the bottom of the screen if you need to. It's not that hard to maneuver when you're small. But the most difficult part is probably this Hammer Brother right here. This part is very dicey. Like I said, you can try to jump on a Hammer Brother right as they land their own jump, and that seems to be the best way to do it. Here is a battle with Hammer Bowser. You just want to stay close to him and run underneath whenever he jumps. And that's it. We've beaten the game as small Mario. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. Well, I guess this is it. If you do go back to the title screen, there is a second quest you can play, and you can choose any of the worlds that you want to start in, but this time it will be a little bit more difficult because the Goombas have been replaced with Buzzy Beetles, and the enemies are generally faster. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat Super Mario Brothers and rescue the princess from the evil Koopa tribe. If it did, make sure to give it a like, and make sure to subscribe for more videos, because we've done 50 episodes and I can't wait to do 50 more. 
So that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.